regarding whole food plant-based diets, it seems to make an incredible amount of sense regarding weight loss, heart disease, stroke, um, seems to make perfect sense. But the question of blood sugar or type two, di type two diabetes seems a little less clear because fruit and lots of beans and whole grains and sweet potatoes does seem like it could raise and does raise your blood sugar. So if you take a glucometer and me measure your blood sugar every day, it does go up if you eat a giant bowl of chickpeas and quinoa and sweet potatoes. So um, is, if you're fighting type two diabetes or pre-diabetes, should you cut down some, I mean the greens I know don't affect it, but should you keep your portions of cooked beans, whole grains, potatoes, squashes, down, and fruits down somewhat, or is that not a concern? So if your goal is to actually correct the diabetes, you have to correct the insulin resistance that causes the diabetes. And as Dr. Furman mentioned earlier, the things you, you do that have short-term facility don't necessarily have anything to do with getting well. Um, what our observation has certainly been, if you are a type 2 diabetic and you're willing to do really dangerous and radical things like eat well and exercise, go to bed on time, um, the vast majority of people will be able to uh, improve the condition mostly uh, to the point where they can eliminate the need for medication and normalize their blood sugar levels. And you're going to do that with a whole plant food SOS free diet, abundant sleep and regular exercise. Now it's true that some foods are going to push your short term sugars higher than others. Uh, fresh fruits, uh, uh, grains may have a higher uh, glycemic response than would be beans or vegetable materials. And so if your concern is regulating short-term blood sugar levels, then you would go on as much uh, uh, green vegetable foods, salads, steamed vegetables, uh, beans, things that have a lower glycemic response, and you'd maybe minimize or avoid the fruits or other, especially the, uh, any type of processed foods. If you do that long enough to achieve optimum weight, you're, you're likely to find yourself optimizing blood sugar levels, and often to the point where you can become much more flexible with your diet and still maintain desirable sugar levels. So short term, you can certainly play around with glycemic response of individual foods. Long term, it may become academic because once you, once you normalize your blood sugar levels, you can eat a whole plant food SOS free diet, usually with reasonable abandon. Um, thank you. Um, I'll, I'll just add one thing. Let's assume that I'm on a keto diet now and I'm eating animal products to control my sugars. But because I'm not eating much fruit or grains in the diet and I'm eating mostly meat or things that don't have glucose in them. Well, that, um, the saturated fat and the high exposure to the hormones from animal products deforms the insulin receptors. And actually, there's the, they're called cavilins and cavins, where the, which are the spaces in the cells that house the insulin receptor. And they change in shape when the membrane of the cell gets, when the fat in the in this mem cell membrane gets more saturated from animal product consumption. So now when this person on a keto diet is controlling their sugars from avoiding animal products, they've made their body more insulin resistant. And now if they have a piece of fruit, they're gonna spike their sugar way up through the roof. Or if they have a, sweet, you know, a piece of butternut squash or something, they'll have a high glucose and they'll say, look, told you, when I have those foods, my sugar goes through the roof. Yeah, but you're, on an animal, you're eating all this fat, saturated fat on your diet, so you've ruined, you, you, you ruined your cell membranes and you've ruined your insulin receptors. We have to, so what we're talking here is restoring integrity to the cell membranes, to the insulin receptors, and to the immune, and to immune function, T, T, T cell function. In other words, the body works as a unit. And diabetes is a disease of inflammation, of insulin resistance, of extra body fat, of, of, a, of lack of phytonutrients. So there's a whole bunch of factors involved. And we have found that utilizing this plant-based approach that is, glyce is also glycemically favorable, we're not feeding people processed foods and white flour and white rice and things like that. And also, the, we're keeping the, we're, the oils we use, I should have said that wrong, the fats we use contain full fiber with them, so the fats are absorbing into the bloodstream very slowly. When you put oils in the diet, the fats get absorbed very rapidly in the bloodstream. And then the fat interferes with insulin, makes you more insulin resistant at the same time. So the fact that the diet is oil-free, high in fiber, and, um, and we're burning the calories used for, we're, use, we're burning the calories off 
as we for our basic metabolic needs, we're not storing them as fat, which changes the metabolic process of the body. Let me give you an example. I tell people who come to my clinic that when they're on the program and they're overweight, if they're not losing two pounds a week, if they're more than 30 pounds overweight, it is, then they're not on the program. Because a person that's overweight has extra cytokines and lipokines being eliminated from the fat supply, they've got insulin resistance, but we see even if the person is still overweight, if they're following the diet carefully and they're dropping weight, their insulin resistance comes down while they're still overweight. Their amount of estrogen production comes down while they're still overweight. These, we, we see benefits coming, improving while they're still overweight because they're eating right and dropping their weight and their insulin receptors are being fixed. Oh, thank you. Um, I think I summed up an, uh, uh, enough right now and our, our group experience is that our joy is taking care of thousands of people with diabetes and heart disease in these conditions and watching their diabetes go away. And the skills we've developed as physicians is knowing how much to cut back on the insulin needs of a type one when they switch this way of eating. How fast should we take the medications off? How, which medications come off first? That's the specialty over the last three decades that we've developed to be able to know predictively how much the person is going to improve from the diets that we prescribe and the effects that we see in practice are incredibly rewarding and miraculous for both the, both the patient and the doctor, and that's why we're so thrilled and excited about what we do. Part of the problem with diabetics is that they're taught to monitor their blood glucose levels, to focus on just that and keeping them stable all the time. And it doesn't matter what strategy they use to get there. It can be drugs. So, and, and of course, what you pointed out is, is really true. A lot of these people coming off of keto and paleo diets, their glucose levels are going to be all over the place. And sometimes that's the price you have to pay until the body learns how to regulate itself differently. So this is a very scary thing for a type 2 diabetic, for example, who starts eating a whole foods plant-based diet with butternut squash and bananas and other foods. And, and first of all, coming off of a keto diet or a paleo diet, they love this. I've had people hug me in the office. You mean I can have fruit and I can have potatoes? And yes, you can. Um, but the, the thing you have to keep talking to them about is not being so concerned at their varying glucose levels because their body's going to take some time to learn how to regulate itself. So the choices are, like Dr. Goldhammer said, you take a walk on the wild side and eat good food and sleep and drink water and exercise, and things are gonna be unpredictable for a while. But at the end, you're gonna reach a point where if you're a type two diabetic, you're probably gonna be a former type two diabetic, or you continue this moment to moment, hour to hour, tightly controlled regulation, which causes you to make very bad decisions about drugs and food choices for momentary, for a momentary, um, uh, feeling of, of peace and calm that's really very disingenuous because if you look at the long-term results for people who manage their diabetic condition this way, in the long term it's horrible. People who take drugs as their doctors prescribe will continue to gain weight, their diabetes will continue to progress, and they will almost all end up insulin dependent if they live long enough in, in, in this way. So um, it is unpredictable, it's scary for them, but it's the better choice in my opinion, although everybody has to make their own choice about it. Um, I'd like to share a little anecdote that kind of illustrates everything that everyone here has been talking about. I had a patient by the name of Kathy who, when I started taking care of her, she had been diagnosed with diabetes for 17 years, and she had really bad, poorly controlled diabetes. She was on uh, doses of 70-30 insulin twice a day, 20-plus uh, units, and she was taking uh, 10 milligrams of Glucotrol XL uh, once a day, and still her blood sugars were averaging two to three hundreds. Uh, she had claudication so bad she had become disabled, couldn't walk a block without uh, being in excruciating pain. And make a long story short, she came, uh, she became my patient, talked to her about changing her diet. Kathy went vegan overnight, actually really surprised me. And over the next eight to 12 weeks, I had to wean her off all of her diabetes medicines one after another because she would call me up and say, Dr. Mills, my blood sugar is 60. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, we're gonna cut this down. We're gonna stop this. But the one thing I kept telling her was that 
I, you know, I wanted her to eat this whole food, plant-based diet, and I said, I want you to eat fresh fruit. And she would say, no, because it's going to make my blood sugar spike. Because that's what she had been told. Her entire life is a diabetic. <laughs> and I kept saying, no, Kathy, I want you to get those antioxidants. I want you to eat some fresh fruit. So we went back and forth, back and forth, and finally, she got angry with me. And so she decided that she was going to eat some strawberries to make her blood sugar go up, to prove to me that she couldn't eat uh, 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 fruit, to get me off her back. And she uh, called me one night. She was so excited, she was almost in tears. She's like, Dr. Mills, I had a bowl of strawberries and my sugar didn't spike. Like, I told you, fresh fruit has fiber, your body has remade itself, you can now eat whole plant foods without a problem. Again, as my colleagues pointed out, it takes time for the body to remake itself, but when you do that, you will be able to eat a whole food plant-based diet and fresh fruit is part of that. So, I, uh, a couple months ago, I was, went to Texas to give a presentation at a continuing med ed seminar for one of the medical schools there, and um, you know, it was 250 physicians uh, that treat diabetic patients, and they're serving, you know, the pulled pork sandwiches and the chocolate cake. I had trouble. There really wasn't anything to eat except the table decoration. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I did my presentation, and a number of doctors came up to me afterwards, and one of them I remember saying, you know, I've been in practice 25 years. I've never had a diabetic get well. <clears throat> So he's telling me his entire practice career, he's never actually seen a diabetic normalize their blood sugar levels. And, and so he was just absolutely amazed the idea that that, that could actually happen. And, and the, the reality, though, is if you're a type 2 diabetic and you're willing to apply these principles and you do it intelligently, there's a very good chance you're going to notice such dramatic improvement that maybe your physician will also have an opportunity to see at least one patient get well. Um. What's been really rewarding for me is that a lot of endocrinologists and diabetologists order my book, The End of Diabetes. They buy them in bulk for their practices, yeah. and they give them to ways of their patients with diabetes. So it's just really been, um, so that's been somewhat very rewarding to see doctors utilizing that, you know. Um, that's cool. But so, loud, so what, we're also, what I'm also seeing is that there are more doctors in the last five years across the country that are in agreement and utilizing our, these techniques more than ever before.